Okay, here's all that Swiss chard that I bought. You see how beautiful it is. And all I did was put it in a colander like this and filled the bowl with water. And that really helps to get any of the excess dirt off of Swiss chard because it can be really dirty. And I took the stems off. And now we're going to cook this for our filling for something that's called an erbazzone. And it's really a specialty that comes from Reggio Emilia, a city in Emilia Romagna. And all I want to do is take this Swiss chard with just the water clinging to its leaves and put it in a large pot. This is the same way that I cook spinach. And without putting this into boiling water and just putting it in a pot with the water just on its leaves, well, you know, you retain a lot more of the nutrients. So believe it or not, this is all going to wilt down. So get it in a pot or a pan like this, a deep pan, and then I'm going to turn the heat on this and just let this go until it wilts down. And that's not going to take very long at all. So here is a tart pan with a removable bottom. This is a nine inch tart pan. And here is some melted butter. We want to prepare the pan by giving this a good brushing of butter all the way around the pan. Make sure you get into all those little crenellated areas along the side because you're going to be removing the sides of this pan after the tort or the tart is baked. So once you have that, then you can just set that aside. Here we have flour, about one and a quarter cups, and this is something called potato starch. It's a very fine starch made from potatoes. It's usually used to thicken sa sauces and such, but I use it here in combination with the flour to produce a tender, tender crust. So I'm gonna put the flour and the potato starch in the food processor. And then we need, oh, about a quarter cup of sugar and a pinch of salt. That goes in. Then because this is a pastry dough, we want to have some butter with this. And here we have four tablespoons of butter. And the secret word here is fredo. You want to make sure that you're using cold butter. And cut it up into bits like this so that it becomes incorporated a lot easier. And with it, some ice water and one egg. So let's get it going. I'll put the top on and get this going first. I want to get the butter kind of mixed in and coating some of that flour. And when it starts, the dough starts to look a little bit mealy, well then you can add your egg. So I'm going to put an egg right through the feed tube and pulse that. And then have ready some ice water. How much water to use is really, it's all in the hands. You want a ball of dough to form around the inside of the bowl. So about two tablespoons, but all flours are different, so it may take a little bit more. And you can always stop the process, take the cover off, and check and see where that dough is. And I know that that doesn't need any more water. Take this out for you, because now what we have to do is chill this. So you gather this up into a ball. Don't work the dough too much, because if you do, you'll toughen it. You don't want a tough pastry dough. So gather it up into a ball, and you see how nicely that comes together. Just the right amount of liquid. And then take it and put it into a piece of plastic wrap. You're going to have to chill this, oh, about two hours in the refrigerator. Get it into a disc form, and then it goes right into the refrigerator. So here is our dough, and we want half of this for the base of our pan, and the other half is going to go over the top because this is a two-crusted pie. So let's cut it in half. And now you get out your rolling pin. Un mattarello, as they say in Italian. And you want to have some extra flour handy to work with on your board. So a little flour goes on the board. And if your dough is just a little too cold, you can take your mattarella and just Beat it down, and that'll soften up the butter, get it a little bit 
warm for you. And then you should be able to roll it out into a nice circle. And air bazzone can also be made without a crust. And you see I'm getting a little tear there. When you get a little tear, you just pinch it closed and go right over it again. I think I'm just going to patch that off. When I had this, and you see my dough's a little dry, so what we're going to do is take that and re-roll it. That's exactly what I'm going to do because even though I'm not aiming for perfection here, I'm not aiming for holes either. So we're going to re-roll this, and I really don't want to roll the dough too much because that will also toughen it. So that looks like it's coming along, and let me leave it there now for a second until I see what's happening with the switch, Swiss chard because I can smell it over here. And yes, it is now where I want it. You see this? It's looking beautiful. I'm going to turn that off, and all I wanted to do was wilt this down. Look at how beautiful that looks. I can now take this out and put it in a colander. My colander is right over here in the sink. I'm going to put all that in and let that just sit there and drain off. And you see, nothing stuck. And I used very, very little water, just the water that was on the leaves. So now let me try and see if I can get my dough to come up onto my pan without it breaking. And I think I can do it. I've done it before. And if it breaks, you just patch. And this is a good lesson in patching pastry. You're never going to see this when we have our filling in here. So there's the bottom dough. Now, all right, there's the base. We're going to leave that there. And I'm going to go back and get my Swiss chard. And now I want to press on this with a, little, with a spoon to get all that excess water out, whatever water is remaining in the chard. And that was about one and three quarter pounds of Swiss chard. And if you didn't want to use Swiss chard, you could use spinach for this. That would be nice with this as well. But I really like the taste of the chard. You can take it out onto a board like this. And then take a knife and just coarsely chop it up. Just coarsely chop it up. So once it's chopped up like that, then you want to put it into a bowl. Get it in a bowl. And then we want to add the rest of those ingredients I was telling you about. And here are some raisins. And soak these, oh, about a half hour or so before you want to use them. So they plump up. Then all you have to do is give them a coarse chop, because they're going to go right in with the Swiss chard. So chop them up so they're in little pieces. Here's citron. And remember, you've seen me use this before. This is a member of the lemon family, and the Italians love to candy this. And they use it mainly in pastries and desserts, but it's really great with the Swiss chard. And then we want a little bit of sugar. So about two tablespoons of sugar goes in and a grating of nutmeg. A grating of nutmegs. You want about a 15 ounce container of ricotta cheese that is well drained because you don't want to add any excess water to the filling or it'll just be too watery. So put it in a bowl in a sieve like this and then when you're ready to use it, take it and mix it in with the Swiss chard and all those other ingredients. And you can just then set this aside while you're filling the pastry shell. So there's our filling. So here's that second piece of dough. And again, I want to put a little bit of flour down on the board and roll this out. Make sure when you do that filling that you allow that Swiss chard to cool down because you don't want to put it in the filling hot to uh, disturb the dough and melt the butter in the dough. So roll out the second piece. This is going to be your top piece of dough, turning the dough a quarter turn every so often. And if your pin starts to stick, just give it a little bit of flour. OK, now let's see. There's our bottom crust. Here's our filling. Get it all in. 
press that into the pan so it's all nice and neat, just like that. Then pick up this dough, and if it tears, don't worry about it. I'm going to fold it in quarters, bring this towards me, and put the peak of the dough right there in the center, and unfold it. Hallelujah. Okay, now I'm going to pinch the edges shut, closed rather, make sure that they're closed all the way around. And now we can take off this excess dough. Now that we have it like that, we've got to give this a nice egg wash. So you want to put an egg in a bowl. I think Mara would kind of be happy that I even attempted making her recipe. Give this a little bit of a quick whip with a fork and put a little bit of egg glaze over the top, just like that. That's going to give it a nice, nice shine. Put a little vent right in the center, just like that, to allow the steam to escape. At 375 degrees, you put it in with great pride, and you wait until it's nicely browned on top, and you can take a cake skewer, put it right in the center, and it comes out clean. That should take about 35 or 40 minutes. Now, what to do with the scraps? Well, here's where you can have a little fun. Roll those scraps out. And I like to do like a star design on mine, so I use a little star cookie cutter like this. And then just, you know, cut out some stars. I do enough to put all over the pie. I don't put them on the pie before it goes in the oven. I put them on the pie after the pie comes out of the oven. So I bake these separately. And I'm just going to add these. And it's nice to do this on parchment paper because these are so small that you don't want them to burn. So put them on a parchment paper lined cookie sheet. And if you have a, another oven, heat that oven to 375 degrees or wait until the pie comes out and then put these in. These go into 375 degree oven and you want to bake those you want to really watch those because when the edges start to turn just a little brown that's when you want to take them out and that's not going to take very long to do well here they are already baked now they go right in the top of the pie just like that just making a little incision with a knife and sticking the stars on edge beautiful and different